about? What's at stake in this election? Whoa, it's packed with some stuff. <laughs> it's packed with some fundamental stuff. <laughs> I say rather articulately. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> there she is summing it up. This election is packed with some stuff. She said rather articulately. She's uh, hoping that Joe Biden will say she's the second, you know, mainstream black person to come along who is articulate and bright and clean and clean, just as he described, of course, President Barack Obama. Womp, womp, womp. Not the brightest, not the brightest. Now, today is Columbus Day, uh, celebrating, and appropriately, Christopher Columbus discovering America, which is what he did. Isn't it great? Now, I was going back and forth with a friend of mine who is a uh, military officer, an active duty military officer, and he said, well, wait a minute. Um, You know, President Trump's talking about Venezuelan gangs taking over multiple apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado, while the the same gang, uh, Trenderagua, uh, TDA, terrorizing Chicago and New York and Indianapolis and Denver and taking over multiple apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado. And Martha Raddatz and ABC News scoffing. It's just a handful of apartment complexes in Aurora, Colorado, hotbed of Latin American gang activity since, you know, 2023, when Joe Biden and Kamala Harris imported these Latin American gangs. But uh, but my friend, who's uh, an 06, he's a colonel, and, and he said, oh, now, wait a minute. Um, I can't protest millions of illegal aliens Non-English speaking, illegal aliens, gang members, cartel members, child sex traffickers. I can't protest them coming into the country and terrorizing cities and towns across America. But I must protest Christopher Columbus arriving here in 1492. When, what happened, Michael? Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's what happened. It was 1492 and the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And then he came back for additional follow-on visits. And uh, sometimes when he and other Europeans got here, they were attacked by people who wanted to hack them to death and maybe, you know, uh, uh, set them on fire and do nasty things and and stuff. So uh, every now and then, back in those days, you know, before cable television, you had to get in fights with people. That's that's uh, That happened a lot. But Columbus discovered America, and... And that Democrats are very upset about. But they don't give a flying hoot about 12 million illegal aliens coming into the United States over the course of three and a half years. That's fine. And if you raise an eyebrow at that, then you're the villain of the story. Right? But you have to attack Christopher Columbus, an Italian who uh, came on a on a uh, journey of discovery funded by the Spanish crown, their queen, Isabella, if I remember correctly. I wasn't there then, but Queen Isabella uh, funded the Christopher Columbus journey to America. And isn't it racist of the Democrats to be angry about what the Spanish crown did all those years ago, centuries ago? And, and a nice Italian man, Cristobal Columbus, isn't it great? Mm-mm-mm. My friend Vinny D in Chicago, nice Italian, uh, nice Italian family, said he sent me Happy Columbus Day today. I'm like, yeah, that's right, Happy Columbus. And it's part of uh, Italian history and, and all this good stuff. Um, so, and, and Western civilization and the discovery of America. And honestly, if the Europeans never came to America and left it alone and the Democrats treated it like it's a wild animal park, like the San Diego Wild Animal Park or something. 
they could come and visit the Native Americans who would still have no electricity and, and no architecture, no glass, uh, no hospitals. Uh, but, but that's where the Democrats would prefer it that way. No horses, because the Spanish brought the horses. I was talking to somebody about this last week, and they're like, what? Horses are not indigenous to North America and South America? No, they're not. And they wouldn't be here today if uh, the Democrats had their way. There would be no horses, no electricity, no communications. It would be, you know, prehistoric times in North America and South America. And that's what the Democrats would prefer. But again, it is rather ironic, you know. Am I allowed to protest the uninvited mass illegal migration from Latin America? Uh, that's a movement of people that uh, the Democrats say is okay, but the movement of Europeans to the Americas in 1492 and thereafter, that must be condemned, right? That you've got to condemn. But Trend de Aragua coming into the country and terrorizing city after city and town after town, that you should just shut up about. Since 1934, every October, the United States has recognized the voyage of the European explorers who first landed on the shores of the Americas. But that is not the whole story. It's not the whole story. Hey, uh, your mother's from India, right, Kamala? Um, how about the great Hindu migration of 1500 BC? I wonder if Kamala is familiar with the Hindu migration of 1500 BC. That's before Christ, Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, that is uh, pretty amazing stuff. But the Hindu migration, uh, how about that? Are we supposed to be angry about that? I'm serious because the Democrats, they're very selective uh, uh, in their outrage, and they're basically, in the, in the end, they're racists. But we knew that. They're the party of slavery and Jim Crow and the bull whip and the lynching tree and the rope and, and everything else. That has never been the whole story. Those explorers ushered in a wave of devastation for tribal nations, perpetrating violence, stealing land, and spreading disease. We must not shy away from this shameful past. Speaking of which, the whooping cough is spreading across the United States right now, probably because of the illegal aliens that uh, the Democrats, like Kamala, that was Kamala in 2021, yeah, they brought in a uh, disease. Well, that's right, the Indians gave the Europeans tobacco. So every cancer death related to tobacco for the last 500 years is attributable to the Native Americans introducing tobacco to the Europeans when the Europeans got here smoking tobacco. Um, so I blame Native Americans for every single tobacco-related death ever since. What do you think? Now, amazing stuff. And uh, Kamala, what about your ancestors? Because, you know, 1500 B.C., the Indo-Aryan peoples in what we now call India had created a small herding and agricultural communities across northern India. Yeah, but then a great migration took place, and they took over areas that, that were not, they were not indigenous to these areas. And what are you going to do about it? You know, human migration, they're selectively outraged by, by well, you know, what they view as uh, Anglo-European migration. Because, you know, in, in Italy, when Christopher Columbus came from Italy, they were doing things, like, you know, building St. Peter's Basilica and the Sistine Chapel and the great art and the painting, the sculpture, the, uh, the science, the literature, the music, the instruments alone. And, uh, and then what, what was going on in North America when, when uh, Michelangelo was on his back painting the creation uh, of God and man on the ceiling of the, of the Sistine Chapel? What was going on in, in Florida at that point? Uh, anything? Anybody? Anybody write anything down about what was going on in 1490? Oh, no written language? Uh, no libraries? No cathedrals? No architecture? No art? No music? Uh, and none of it written down, so we can't see what it is because no written language. 
Yeah, the Iroquois had a very coarse, rough, broad uh, alphabet of sorts and, and not a single text to reference uh, from that era or any other era. Just saying. I'm just, you know, I know, Native Americans are great. I've got a great friend who's an actual Cherokee Indian, unlike uh, full-blooded and a great uh, 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 famous Marine, but never mind that. Uh, and unlike Elizabeth Warren, you know, he's actually a Native American. Isn't that amazing? But isn't it great that on, on they call it uh, Native... Uh, uh, indigenous. Yeah, Indigenous Peoples Day. Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, okay, well, that's great. I'm not interested in bashing anybody except you guys uh, bash and attack, you know, Christopher Columbus statue. I think it's Chicago. They took away the Christopher Columbus statue, put it in a crate, and it's in a warehouse somewhere because they're racists. They're such bigots. And uh, what are they, you know, he's, he's, he's an Italian, uh, and then he became an Italian-American. He was like uh, the first Italian-American, I think, wasn't he? There was no Ellis Island, though. And uh, that wait, Ellis Island, the, that migration is okay, right? Coming through legally, Ellis Island, about 12 million people came through Ellis Island over the course of about 64 years. Now we've had about 12 million people, and they all came in legally, and they were vetted and checked for diseases that Kamala's talking about here. Yeah, it's true. When cultures that had never come into contact with one another came into contact with one another, it's true that uh, diseases often became an issue. That's called history, all right? And... They're angry with history, the Democrat Party. A bunch of people. Mm -mm -mm. Expletives deleted. Um, okay, now, we just played the, the Mike Johnson, um, Speaker of the House, talking on NBC yesterday to Kristen Welker. No, we need to see President Trump's cholesterol levels because, and, uh, and Speaker Johnson literally laughed just a little. He couldn't help it. He was trying to be as polite as possible, but he laughed just a little and said, I'm sorry, you think you're going to change people's votes with his LDL? Kristen, Kristen listen to your question. Aced. Honestly, you, you, I know your job is to uh, do the bidding of the Democrat Party and not be a journalist, but my God, you're going to need a, another chapstick at this point. What a... What a joke these people are. Mm -mm -mm. Um, all right, let's see. Let's grab a uh, let's grab a phone call. Let's go to let's go to Brad calling from Miami, but he lives in Key West, Florida. Brad, you're on the Chris Plant show. Hey, Chris. Thank you again. We've talked before, and I I was throwing out a Glenbrook North just like you were throwing out a Nutria. Um, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> um, I wanted to explain that people that order espresso martinis and they get the three beans thrown in, <laughs> they, um, if you look it up on uh, Wikipedia, it says that it represents health, happiness, and prosperity. But originally, it represented the three ships Columbus sailed to America in, the Nina, the Pina, and the Santa Maria. Because I did Columbus not know that. Coffee. That's fun. And because Columbus brought coffee back to uh, Europe. How about that? That is great. I didn't know that yep. about the espresso martini. I'm not a coffee uh, drinker, therefore I'm not an espresso drinker. Therefore, I've never ordered an espresso martini, although I like a nice vodka martini from time to time. Uh, an espresso martini is yeah, nothing that I've ever ordered. Say again? But uh, I, I don't drink coffee either, but uh, when you sit at a bar, you'll see people ordering it, and they drop three beans in there. But it represents the three shifts of Columbus. I think that's great. Now, uh, I'll, I'll have to uh, point that out when uh, people are – I'm going to have to notice people espresso uh, – their espresso martinis now. Um, that is, uh, that is hey, great Chris, stuff. Yeah, Brad, go ahead. Chris, i gotta, I got to tell you something. Uh -huh. um, Friday, Friday in Key West uh -huh. is 10 days of Fantasy Fest. You should come down. It's wild. <laughs> it is the biggest party in Key West. Fantasy I have no Fest doubt. Key West. Look it up. 
I mean, it, it was started back in the 80s, I think, by uh-huh. uh, the gay community. Uh-huh. And it's just people get it's just people getting naked. Yeah, we've been to Key West on vacation. My best girl and I have been to Key West on vacation. It is, and it's a lot of fun. It's a fun place. Uh, and you took a little bit of a beating from uh, from the hurricane uh, down there. I watched people going, there's that marker at the southernmost point in the United States. And, and we've been there, too, on our bicycles and, and stuff. Uh, but I noticed people going out there in the midst of the hurricane, getting uh, getting blown around. And it got beat up pretty good. Key West is a lot of fun. And it's probably the gayest place sorry go ahead that's only three blocks from my house is that right that's a it's a fun place yeah. it's probably the gayest place in america and it's a lot of fun and it's a beautiful place and it's got a great history for you know for our short history there and so on um big fun i don't think i'm gonna be able to make it down for the fest this year i i got i i got too many jobs you know i'm busy i'm a busy guy We must shed light on it and do everything we can to address the impact of the past on Native communities today. Ah, yes. Well, you know, the biggest problem that um, Indian nations and reservations have is too much socialism. The, uh, The closest thing we get to socialism in the United States is Native American reservations, and it's led to catastrophic catastrophic results over the years there is a uh, uh, the the internet is full of stuff on this indigenous people's day thing and here's a, a photograph here a, a woman posted online um a very nice looking very attractive uh, apparently native american woman with uh, native american earrings and things like that and she's uh what is the uh, turn of phrase flipping off flipping off the camera with her middle finger and then there's a curse word, and it says, beep, Christopher Columbus. Beep, Christopher Columbus is right there on the thing. And the first response is, they were refugees looking for a better life, bringing diversity and inclusion, which they were. Don't be a bigot. Don't be a bigot. And, of course, it is bigoted. And, and Europeans would go places, and very often they'd be murdered, like Captain Cook and his uh, British explorer and his uh, shipmates were all murdered on the beaches of Hawaii by, uh, by the natives of Hawaii, murdered them all, killed them real good. And, uh, you know, every now and then these Europeans would land on these big ships that looked like spaceships to the, to the people on the shore. I uh, had never seen anything like that, you know. It's not ex- exactly a birchwood canoe big old sails, and and they had people from all over the world on those ships, too, including a lot of Basques, a lot of Basques, and I'm a Basque. Ah, so many moving parts everywhere you look. Remarkable. Yes, sir. Yeah, I tell you, I'm thinking that the uh, the guy arrested at the Trump rally is not is not a bad guy. I'm, uh, I think you know, the preponderance of information and evidence at this point uh, would suggest that he's that he's not a villain. He's not a bad guy. Now, why he's there at this rally and getting his car searched and a shotgun and a pistol, and he said he's never fired a gun, and but uh, it doesn't look like he's another another would be assassin. Um, but it is a peculiar set of circumstances, no doubt about it. And there are a lot of oddities surrounding this with Vem, Vem Miller, V-E-M Miller. Odd, multiple driver's licenses, different identities, multiple passports, different identity. That's all weird. Uh, two guns, um, you know, magazines are limited in uh, California, I think, in your your semi-automatic pistol. I think it's limited to 10 rounds like it is in Washington, D.C. And uh, they say that he had a, a magazine that violated, violated that, you know. Mm-mm. But they let him out on bail, and, and who knows. He's a guy who posts videos and all that good stuff. But I, I digress. Let me get, uh, because they're, the crazy stories just keep on popping. You know what I'm talking about. And here's another one. 
that uh, the Washington Post is doing today. Hurricane recovery officials in North Carolina located amid reports of, quote, armed militia, end quote. Emails show. And the Washington Post is, I, I think it's possible they're spreading misinformation or disinformation, propaganda. Uh, it's, not, it's not clear, but here it is. Hurricane recovery officials in North Carolina relocated amid report of armed militia, emails show. And they say that there are armed militias out there hunting FEMA employees. Uh, there is no evidence to support that, but somebody saw it on the Internet, so the Washington Post went with it. Safety fears are growing as misinformation. This is the Democrat Party-issued word of the week, right? We had Hillary using it, and people need to be jailed for misinformation. Uh, uh, civil penalties and or criminal penalties for misinformation. Then Kamala started misinformation. Then, then uh, the news media all started with their misinformation. They, uh, they, love, they, they, they have one brain and they share it. It's like, you know, cutting it up with a little plastic knife at McDonald's. They have one brain. Everybody gets a tiny piece and they're Democrats and they all say the same thing. They all think the same thing, if, if you can call it thinking. Just, uh, just amazing. Mm-mm-mm. Speaking of Kamala, they're very upset, the Democrats are, because Kamala's support with, uh, among Latinos is, the Democrats are saying, dangerously low, dangerously low support. Well, maybe you shouldn't have everything based on race, you bunch of racists. You gave us the KKK and every Jim Crow law ever, and now you're still balkanizing the country along lines of race. But back to this FEMA thing, because it looks like a lot of hooey to me. Out of Lake Lurie, North Carolina, federal emergency response personnel on Saturday had employees operating in hard-hit Rutherford County, North Carolina, stop working and move to a different area because of concerns over armed militia threatening government workers in the region, according to an email sent to federal agencies helping with response in the state. Around 1 p.m. on Saturday, an official with the U.S. Forest Service, which is supporting recovery efforts after Hurricane Helene, along with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, sent an urgent message to numerous federal agencies warning that, quote, FEMA has advised all federal responders, Rutherford County, North Carolina, to stand down and evacuate the county immediately. The message stated that National Guard troops had come across that uh, X-2 trucks of armed militia saying they were out hunting FEMA. Is that right? Is that, uh, that's what happened here, is it? Uh, I got it. We're, we're living in a, a, an, an X2 trucks that's uh, like, you know, two buys instead of four buys. So a, a pickup trucks with armed militia. Is it hunting season? Because they could show Tim Walls how to load his, uh, his Beretta shotgun. But never mind that. The IMTs, that's the incident management teams, the IMTs have been notified and are coordinating the evacuation of all assigned personnel in that county. Now, when these people said they came across the trucks with armed militia who said they're hunting FEMA, did they, you know, maybe pull out their iPhone and take a picture of the people or make a video or get a license plate because... It would seem to me that if you're a federal government official with the U.S. Forest Service and you're involved in the recovery efforts and truckloads, plural truckloads of armed militia uh, are saying they're hunting FEMA, you might notify the authorities about that, don't you think? You might even call 911 or call the police or something. But no, they sent an email saying evacuate. Uh, That doesn't smell right, I've got to say. Two federal officials confirmed the authenticity of the email, the Washington Post types. 
though it was unclear whether the quoted threat was seen as credible. You mean they're uh, young guys hunting, and somebody said, what are you doing? We're hunting FEMA. Ha, 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 ha. And they threw a beer can at a sign. You know, I mean, what, uh, what's up with that? The National Guard referred questions to FEMA when asked about the incident. One Forest Service official coordinating the, coordinating the Helene recovery said responders moved to a safe area and at least some work in that area, which included clearing trees off of dozens of damaged and blocked roads to help search and rescue queues, uh, crews, as well as groups delivering supplies, was paused. Sure. By Sunday afternoon, personal, personnel were back in place. This sounds like a completely phony, like a teenager making a wisecrack. And this is the federal government response. The teenager that said this uh, should post something mocking on social media because this is obviously ridiculous. Come across X2 trucks. I, I guess that's two. Why don't you just say two trucks instead of X2, right? Came across, you could even spell it out, T-W-O, two trucks of armed militia, and they call them militia. How did you identify them as militia? Were they wearing uniforms? Did they have masks on like uh, Democrats do when they loot stores and mobs, which they do quite frequently? Violent criminal mobs of Democrats looting and plundering and stealing like Visigoths, even though they don't know what Visigoths are. Yes, sir. FEMA has advised all federal responders in Rutherford County. Isn't that amazing stuff? The news media and the lady, what did she call it, Rutherford County or something? Like she's never seen the name Rutherford before. Out of an abundance of caution, FEMA says instead of going door to door, disaster assistance teams there will be stationed at fixed locations while the agency looks into alleged threats against their personnel. FEMA says search and rescue is still underway and disaster recovery centers remain open. The move comes as the Washington Post reported an email by the U.S. Forestry Service to federal responders in Rutherford County, Rutherford. alerting them of an apparent stand down after National Guard troops reportedly encountered armed militia saying they were, quote, hunting FEMA. Yeah. And uh, and then federal, the whole federal government panicked and there were two pickup trucks and they call them armed militia based on what? I, uh, how about the militias that uh, loot our stores and mobs, which they've done in this neighborhood repeatedly? Do we call them militia? I, I'm going to say they're armed, even though we didn't see their guns because the way they behave like uh, criminals. Isn't that amazing? Mm -mm -mm. Uh, all right, let's go to, uh, look at that. Look at how, how quickly uh, people respond to all this. Um, let's go to Michael calling from Arlington, Virginia. Miguel, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Morning, Chris. Just wanted to correct the record real quick. I think you got a bad copy on your print there. It's Lake Lure. It's a huge, great fishing lake. Bill Dance Outdoors has done scenes down there, all kinds of famous stuff out there. It's Lake Lure. Uh -huh. I think it was just a bad typo. The other thing is I'm having a real hard time believing that they ran into truckloads of militia in Rutherford County. Had it been Avery County or Burke County or Watauga County or something like that where I'm from, I would have had a lot easier time believing it, but not down there. It's too damn civilized. And the other piece of it is, fine, if you ran into locals who were out there trying to solve the problem, why didn't you hand them the damn clipboard and get out of the way and let them deliver the food and the water and stuff? Because every hillbilly knows we live through snow. We live through hurricanes. We live through power outages lasting weeks. We know the priority, water, food, shelter, in that order. And I'm telling you, it's October down there off the mountaintop. That means it's starting to get down to freezing temperatures at nighttime. Yeah. You better solve this problem pretty damn quick or the body count will go up again. Yeah, and they don't even know what the body count is. They're still trying to get into areas where they believe they're that, going. That's the thing. They're still hiding numbers. They're still pretending that this has not been a, a disastrous event. Right. I don't remember the last time you had several hundred hillbillies die in one round where the government wasn't shooting at them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, good stuff. And I, I have uh, uh, thank you for the correction on Lake Lure. I had uh, never seen Lake Lure mentioned before uh, in copy. Oh, it's beautiful. I have no doubt that it is. And I uh, and I appreciate that. I honestly do. 
and uh, and you know the neighborhood. And you, did you hear the CBS lady call it? What'd she call it? Rutherford, Rutherford. Like she, Rutherford, and it's that classic thing of you know uh, every time they read a Hispanic name, they have to do it with a Hispanic accent. Right. You notice that they aren't using Southern accents to talk about Avery County. <laughs> 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 there ain't nobody bothering with their black accent when they're talking about the hillbillies in North Carolina. Yeah. And that's part of what's pissing me off too, is because you're not giving us due, you're not giving us e- equity. I want my <laughs> equity. <laughs> That is great. Thank you, brother. That's great stuff. Thank you, Michael. Good stuff. That's uh, that's fun. Um, yeah, and it's true. They haven't the, the areas they haven't gotten to, and they still believe there are going to be uh, lots of uh, bodies uh, yet to find. But uh, our news media is so so corrupt, so awful. It's just uh, it's just amazing how awful they are. It really is. According to the Washington Post, National Guard troops had come across trucks of armed militia saying they were out hunting FEMA. NBC News has not seen the email cited by the Post, and it's unclear whether the threat mentioned was seen as credible. So CBS this morning was the first audio that we played. That was NBC that we just played for you there uh, from this morning. And it's big news in the Washington Post. I have the Washington Post story in front of me here. And... Uh, it's all just as fake as the day is long. But they want to demonize and vilify people that don't live in Manhattan. Uh, you know, if they demonized Trend Aragua this way, we'd be having a different discussion on the illegal alien criminal wave that the Democrats have invited into the country to rape and kill and loot and plunder and shake down and extort and, and rob and to traffic uh, uh, women and children and drugs and cause anarchy everywhere they go. But our news media shouts you down if you point to it. You're a Democrat Party. Because make no mistake, these people are all Democrat Party. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Amazing. All right, now, what do we have? Uh, I know we have a lot of stuff. I can't believe how quickly these three hours have been going by. Um, Amazing stuff. Tampon Tim with his uh, his uh, twelve gauge his Beretta twelve gauge shotgun. Did he violate the law by putting too many shells? Was it uh, restricted? Honestly, but he is Elmer Fudd. There's no doubt about the fact that he's definitely Elmer Fudd. Shh. Be very very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. He's hunting wabbits. Mm-mm-mm. Man, I'm telling you. And, you know, uh, Donald Trump is out campaigning every day and holding rallies and doing interviews and stopping and talking to the press and doing podcasts and uh, sitting down with hostile fake journalists who are Democrat front people and and stuff. And Kamala Harris is out there. She is uh, uh, spreading misinformation and disinformation. There should probably be criminal penalties for the not just civil, but also criminal penalties that... um, that she should be held, she should, needs to be held accountable and pay her fair share. But here's Kamala Harris that uh, saying, and again, we've got uh, NBC News pressuring the Speaker of the House yesterday. We need President Trump's uh, LDL levels. We need to know what his cholesterol levels are and pounding, angrily pounding the table. We need his medical records. Well, what about Joe Biden's brain? Well, he's got to take a cognitive test, which uh, Trump actually took when he was in the White House. And they attacked him for passing it with flying colors. Joe Biden, you know, couldn't do a a Chinese puzzle. Here's Kamala. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. It makes you wonder. It makes you wonder. Why does his staff want him to hide away? Hide away. The Russian playbook. One must question. Whatever you One must question. Are they afraid that people will see that he is too weak and unstable to lead America? Is that what's going on? Sounds like Munich, 1933, doesn't it? It is classic Russian uh, technique to blame on the other guy what they're planning to do themselves. Ah, yes, the old Soviet playbook. The Democrats trot it out every day. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Trump, who is... You know, and she's not held a press conference since she became the nominee. Literally not held a press conference since she... And the press gives her a tongue bath every day for not 
being accountable in any way, not holding press conferences, not doing interviews except with, what was that? Oh, yeah, yeah. what's that? Uh, Who's Your Daddy? Yeah, the Who's Your Daddy podcast. I did some research on that over the weekend. Um, if your daughter follows that podcast, chances are good she's going to be a prostitute when she grows up. Do you know what they teach? What You know, see this uh, thing, the Gluck Gluck 9000? Did you see this? Have you seen this? Uh, Michael's laughing in a way that suggests to me that he has seen it. Um, this is, and that's so she goes on this. I, I can't say any more about the podcast because of FCC regulations. We live in very peculiar times. By the way, the Border Patrol has endorsed uh, Donald Trump and J.D. Vance and uh, Paul Perez. Is that right? Paul Perez, head of the the Border Patrol, endorsing the Trump and Vance ticket. America, I have a message for you. If we allow Borders R. Harris to win this election... Every city, every community in this great country is going to go to hell. Now, uh, another another fun. So, I mean, of course, because and he goes on and he's very strong. He's very good. But I don't have enough time to do everything that he's done. Now, in Florida, there was a pro Trump boat parade. We participated in a pro Trump boat parade here on the Potomac River a couple of weeks ago. And in Florida, a pro-Trump boat parade. And some Democrats showed up in their boat with Nazi flags and Trump flags and a Mike Lindell pillow ad because they like to call everybody Nazis, even though they are the Nazis. They Funny thing, they're, they're anti-Israel, anti-Jewish. They exterminate 40% of the black population in the womb. Uh, they create you know, the school-to-prison pipeline. And by the way, Adolf Hitler's party was the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany, and half the Democrats are now the squad and Bernie Sanders and the rest. Socialist Bolsheviks, you know. 